So let's move on to this concept of channel layering. So channel layering is that next cornerstone. It basically unlocks the, in, the channels that were previously in use and allows you to greatly multiply the capacity. So you see the diagram on the left. There's this hexagonal diagram. That's what Microcell does. If you have channel 11 in the middle, none of the neighbors can be channel 11. They have to be channels 1 or 6. And you see them alternating to prevent any two access points from sharing the same channel. That means that channel 11 access point, you can only put that one access point there. If you need more coverage at that spot, you're out of luck. You cannot put another access point and tune it to 1 or 6 because that will destroy the rest of the network. Not so. With virtual cell, you get a completely different way of thinking where you can layer these channels all the way across. So you can have, in that one center, three access points. So you use, in fact, every channel that exists, you could deploy right at that spot. And because that causes cellular overlap, which destroys microcell, but works just perfectly well in our system, you have absolutely no problems. And so the question is then, how great can you multiply this capacity? Well, if you're thinking of 2.4 gigahertz, you can go somewhere between two and three times the raw capacity in microcell. And then when you start factoring a lot of the things that we do on top of it, you could get even higher depending on your application. 5 gigahertz is interesting because it has even more channels. And so when you have more channels to the mix, you have more channels you can layer. And so you can see that basically the capacity just scares, scales up linearly. OK, so again, why do this? And the whole idea here is that, well, being able to deploy an entire building on a single channel does unlock tremendous capacity for those other channels. And therefore, it comes down to one thing. We're not mandating one way of deploying. We're actually allowing the ultimate and in install flexibility. How does this work? Well, let's say you wanted a single channel configuration. As I said, people have done that before. And as the benefits are, it's really the easiest deployment in the world to set up. You just figure out where you put the access points based on raw coverage calculations, which just may mean a rule of thumb like every 60 feet. There's no RF complexity involved. You install it, and then it's really sort of fire and forget or set and forget. Just put them out there. And you won't have to worry about changing our plans or strange things happening and you have to move furniture. None of that really matters here because you never needed a detailed RF plan to begin with. Of course, another option is you can try to keep the same number of APs as a microcell deployment. And this happens in rip and replace deployments, for example, where you already know how many APs you have in the past and you're looking for something better. Well, doing that, you can get over twice the capacity as your original microcell deployment. And you know what? Even though it's twice the capacity, it's not twice the work or even half the work. It's a lot less work because it's still the same deployment concepts. You stick the access points up, you make sure there's coverage across your network, and that's really it. You fire and forget. But on top of all that, you're not required to put these channel layers. You can grow as you need to. And so basically what that means is you can start off with a single channel, and when you find areas where you need more capacity, unlike Microsoft, you're not locked out now. You add more and more and more. And you can now greatly exceed Microsoft capacity because you can use every channel that's available. Again, the same thing, no RF planning. There's no channel changes, no power settings you have to worry about or that the system has to go out and automatically solve. And so you get this wonderful benefit, which is the network scales intuitively. And at the same time, it's the same in the morning as it is when you went to bed. There's none of this sweeping that happens or this automatic radio resource management updating, which can go and reconfigure everything and wreak havoc on your network. Instead, the network is always the same when you leave it as when you come back to it. Now, of course, if that's not enough for you, you can max out your capacity. And, well, that's a great thing. And if you do that, for example, you can pretty much have the highest capacity of wireless anywhere you want. A good example of that is the Philadelphia School of the Future, where they just threw every channel out there to make sure that they had as much capacity as wireless could provide. So all four of those are capable in any deployment we have. It really depends on how much capacity somebody wants. Again, one of the key takeaways here then is how is all this working? It just sounds a little magic, but keep in mind that for the same amount of capacity as microcells, we're able to use less channels, and that's where this channel layering really comes shine. Now we think about high density and reliability. Again, a major component of our system, no matter how many channels you have out there, the key is how many people can you pack into that access point, and what does your network look like when you do pack them? So the key here again is what we're fairly dividing the bandwidth not just at the lowest densities, but the highest densities. What does that mean? Well, it means time fairness. And time fairness is this concept that breaks the weakest link phenomenon in wireless land. What is that weakest link phenomenon? If you have everybody on your network, you have some clients that are fast, some clients that are slow. Fast clients can be fast for a number of reasons, more power, more expensive. But most often, it's really just different technology. 11N is more fast than 11G or 11A, and 11G is faster than 11B. So when you look at it that way, 
You could have 11N, 11G, and 11B all on the same network. Well, the weakest link in that case is the 11B client because it, when it transmits the, transmits the same number of packets, takes so much more time to do so that it dominates the conversation. Well, we know that, and we don't like that, like that happening. So what we do is we have this concept of time fairness where we prevent one client from dominating. That makes the fast clients now able to speak. In fact, go fa they can go as fast as they ordinarily would have, essentially, even though slow clients are present. And what does this establish? It gives you that reliable and dependable performance across all types of devices. The fast ones, the slow ones, the powerful ones, the weak ones, they all get to get their fair share of time on the network. You can see these graphs below. These actually come from real tests that were done. Um, the bottom left one is from the microcell, and if you can see that, it's pretty obvious that some of these were really, really, really slow, and some of them were really, really, really fast. Interestingly enough, these were all the same client types at the same distances. It just so happens that because of rate adaptation and a number of other concepts and phenomena in wireless, some will go faster at a certain time and some will go slower. Well, go ahead and look on the right side, you'll see something that's completely different. In fact, they look fair. That's what we do. We do that at 10 clients. We do that at a lot more than 10 clients. We do it at 30, 50, keep on going. We're still providing that, and that's a key part of our system. So as we look at this now, let's try to summarize. What are the things about air traffic control that make it so useful? And let's compare it to Microcell because that's really the other architecture that's out there. So again, we, you know, Microcell is third generation. What does this third generation, fourth generation mean? This is something that Gartner actually came up with to help describe what are the different types of wireless networks out there. So first generation was home, second generation was fat AP, third generation is thin AP, and fourth generation is really, well, coordinated AP. And so that's what we're doing. The vendors, pretty obviously, every other vendor really just falls under the microcell category. And, well, we don't. Again, that may not necessarily be by choice for them. I'm not really sure that they're capable with the hardware they have of doing the sort of things we can. And so that allows us to have that differentiation that we know will stick. In terms of cells, they have microcells, which is, again, hexagonal deployments. you got to figure out which channel to go on. Either you do it yourself, the system solves it for you, but somehow you got to keep play this game of keeping each AP on different channels. Well, virtual cell, put them all in the same channel, it works perfectly. Again, as your channels get layered, in a microcell you have this channel staggering problem, where if you have this hexagon, then the access points that are on channel 1 or the access points on channel 6 have no neighbors on those same channels. They're neighbors only on a different channel, so you're wasting a lot of capacity. With channel layering and air traffic control, you don't worry about that. You can, if you want to, use that excess capacity. We have it available for you right there. Now, in terms of planning requirements, again, Microcell has this detailed RF channel plan. And I'm showing the, the dartboard there because it's really that. You have to hit a bullseye to even get it to work. The whole point there is that they're trying to so carefully make sure that these APs don't overlap and yet don't have coverage holes that if anything changes in the world, then that can be completely wrong. And even if nothing changes, it's unlikely that anybody put enough information into the plan to even get an accurate solution. For us, you just have to do a coverage plan only, and that can be optional in many cases with rules of thumb. And that's the whole point of that paintbrush in the paint bucket. You really just dip the brush in the bucket and paint your capacity wherever you want. Same idea. You stick APs up where it looks like you need one. Not too big of a deal. Microcell, well, density supports low, air traffic control high. Not surprising. Reliability, again, Microcell has low RF reliability. We have high RF reliability. Not just because we have these layers of coverage everywhere, but because those layers of coverage have uniformly higher signal strength everywhere. Not only are our power levels higher, means less APs, but because we have this concept of the virtual cell, there are more radios available for a particular client to be served by than in Microcell, where they're isolating them by channel. Simplicity, again, Microcell is not very simple. In fact, it's really complicated. It requires you to know a lot about RF to set this thing up right. For air traffic control, that's not true. It's generally high. So that's it for this tech spot. Thank you for listening.